Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Griva Nashamhavamana Shimadutana Rajendra Nanda Nashama Tana Gatana Kaita Bashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Yashoda Dula Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Puranjahara Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Bhuvana Sundara Bhara Ravana Thakura Makana Thaskara Gopi Jana Vashrahari Rajera Rakala Gopa Vrinda Kalo Chita Hari Vamsi Dari Yogindra Bandana Srimantanandana Rajatana Bhaya Hari Navina Nirada Rupa Manohara Mohana Bamsi Bihari Yashoda Nandana Kamsa Nishudana Nikonjara Sabila Hasi Tadambatanana Rasa Parayana Vrindaviti Nani Vasi Ananda Vardhana Prima Dikaitana Pulashara Yoja Kakana Gopangana Gana Chita Vinodana Samasta Guna Gana Dhamma Yamuna Jeevana Kele Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Namashudaras Bo Krishnayash 
Rako Vachanamana Mora Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bhadadhari Yashoda Nandana Prachajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Manande Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaivam Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudir Hayat Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Nashtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 3, entitled Haranyi Kashipu plans to become immortal. Text number 11. Anyate dam vidashye ham. It's on the UK, you can't buy man. Take a shijayana ben. Anyate dam vidashya ham. Anyate dam vidashye ham. Ayata Purvam Ojasa An Ayata Purvam Ojasa Ayata Purvam Ojasa Kim Anyay Kala Nirdutai Kim Anyay Kala Nirdutai Kim Anyay Kala Nirdutai 
Kau Pante Vaishnava Debi Vaishnava Debi Kau Pante Vaishnava Debi Kau Pante Vaishnava Debi Anyate dambidashya ham Anyate dambidashya ham Ayata purva mojasa Ayata purva mojasa Kim anyai kala nirdutai Kim anyai kala nirdutai Kau pante vaishnava debi Kau pante vaishnava debi Anya te dam vidashye ham Ayata purvam ojasa Kim anyai kala nirdutai Kau pante vaishnava debi Anya te dam vidashye ham Ayata purva mojasa Kim manyai kala nirdutai Kau pante vaishnava debi Okay, Jen. Vaishnavis, anybody? Yes, good. Anybody else? Ayata purva mojasa Kemanyai kala nirdutai Gaupante Vaishnava Debi Yes, good. Anyata, just the opposite. Idam, this universe. 
Vedashye shall make Aham I Ayata inappropriate Purvam as it was before Ojasa by dint of the power of my austerity. Kim, what use? Anyai, with other. Kala Nirdutai, vanquished in due course of time. Kalpa ante at the end of the millennium. Vaishnava Adibi with planets like Dhruva Loka or Vaikuntha Loka. Translation By dint of my severe austerities, I shall reverse the results of pious and impious activities. I shall overturn all the established practices within this world. Even Dhruvaloka will be vanquished at the end of the millennium. Therefore, what is the use of it? I shall prefer to remain in the position of Brahma. Purport by Srila Prabhupada Haranyakashipu's demoniac determination was explained to Lord Brahma by the demigods who informed him that Haranyakashipu wanted to overturn all the established principles. After executing severe austerities, people within this material world are promoted to the heavenly planets. But Haranyakashipu wanted them to be unhappy, suffering because of the di diplomatic feelings of the demigods, even in the heavenly planet. He wanted those who were harassed in this world by material transactions to be unhappy for the same reason, even in the heavenly planets. Indeed, he wanted to introduce such harassment everywhere. One might ask how this would be possible since the universal order has been established since time immemorial. But Haranyakashipu was proud to declare that he would be able to do everything by the power of his tapasya. He even wanted to make the Vaishnava position insecure. Those, oh, these are some of the symptoms of Asuric determination. Om Magyana Timarandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanye Nathasma Shri Gurave Vanchakaupata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhaivacha Patita Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Alright, so Na Narada Muni is describing to Maharaj Yudhisthira about why it happened that Lord Nishringadev appeared and killed the big demon Haranyakashipu. So Narada Muni is telling how Haranyakashipu want, 
he, he decided that he would do austerities and he decided, oh, Nihwe Fanima. Dakai Fani. Okay, so we're telling about the appearance of Lord Nishringadev. And we're hearing how Haranyik, there was a demon called Haranyikashipu. So Haranyikashipu decided he would do austerities. And he decided he would do austerities so that he can get the power of Brahma. So Haranyakashipu was a demon and he was very determined about what he was going to do. So the demigods are telling Lord Brahma about this. The demigods are telling Lord Brahma that Haranyakashipu wants to change everything. Usually in the material world people would, if people would do austerities then they will go to the heavenly planets. But Haranyakashipu wanted to change that. Usually if people go to the heavenly planets, they'll be happy there and they will enjoy a lot of sense gratification. Yeah, they will enjoy sense gratification. Yes, just translate every word I say, right? But Haranyakashipu wanted them to be unhappy. He wanted that even if they go to the heavenly planets, they will, they will suffer. And he wanted that people in the material, people on this earthly planet will also suffer. He, want, he wanted people everywhere to be miserable and suffer. So, of course, this is not how it's supposed to be. It's. Yeah, yeah. Harani Kashipu said, No, I'm going to change everything. I'll do it by my tapasya. Mm. And he wanted to make even the position of the Vaishnavas, the devotees, that they will be in trouble. Usually Vaishnavas can go anywhere, be anywhere, and they won't be disturbed. Uh, 
right? Heaven and hell and liberation are all the same for a devotee. Heaven Heaven, hell and liberation. Liberation, jiatur, yeah. They're, they're, it's all the same for a devotee. Because wherever the devotee goes, they will serve Krishna. They will chant the holy name and they will teach the message of Krishna. Right? Lord Chaitanya told the householder man and in Lord Chaitanya met this one Brahmana householder. Householder Jusha Jusha uh, uh, that he told him because the householder he wanted to leave his home, he wanted to leave his family, he wanted to go with Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Chaitanya said, no, 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 don't, don't talk like that. Lord Chaitanya told him, Yari Deki Tari Kaho Krishna Upadesh. Lord Chaitanya told him, wherever you go, whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. Yeah, tell them the glories of Krishna, the message of Krishna. And in this way, Lord Chaitanya said, if you do like this, then you will always have my association. So Lord Chaitanya didn't like people to do things just spontaneously without thinking about them without preparing. He wanted, he wanted people, they should be thoughtful. They shouldn't just do things without thinking. Just like Arjuna on the battlefield at Kurukshetra. Arjuna is thinking, should I fight or should I not fight? Hmm. Arjuna was, he asked Krishna about it. And he told Krishna all of his reasons why he thought it was wrong to fight. And Krishna answered all of Arjuna's doubts. So that in this way uh, we see how a devotee will behave in difficult situations. Yeah. So here uh, they talk about Harani Kashipu says that he he said Dhruva Loka would be vanquished at the end of the millennium. Dhruva Loka. Uh, 
，如果能保护在这个这一个千年。So Druva Loka, the planet where Druva resides, is the it's the pole star. It's in the center of the universe. Druva Loka is Druva so that it's in all the planets rotate around Druva Loka. So Dhruva Loka is actually a spiritual planet. Right. When Dhruva, Dhruva Maharaj, when he was a young boy, he'd gone to the forest. And he did austerity for six months. And the Lord came to him. And he told Dhruva Maharaj that now you're going to become the king. You have, you'll take a kingdom. You'll, be, you'll have to rule the kingdom. So Dhruva Maharaj, became, he ruled the kingdom for many years in the Satya Yuga. So then he retired. And when he retired, he went to Badarik Ashram. Badarik Ashram in the Himalayas. Hmm. And he was doing tapasya there. And then the Vaikuntha airplane came. And the Vaikuntha airplane told Dhruva Maharaj, get in the plane, we're going to take you. And they took him to Druvaloka. Druvaloka it, it's a, it's a planet in the material world, but it's a spiritual planet. So all the other planets they get annihilated. In the universe, all the planets are annihilated at the end of the life of Brahma. At the end of the Brahma's life. Then all the material planets, they're all annihilated. But Dhruva Loka doesn't get annihilated. Because Dhruva Loka is a spiritual planet. But it becomes unmanifested. Yeah, because that is the end of the life of Brahma. So, so all of the planets, all the everything will enter back into the body of Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu is laying in the Kajio ocean. And all the everything, all the conditioned souls and all the material planets, they all enter into the body of Mahavishnu. They came for at the beginning of the life of Brahma, they came from Mahavishnu. Right? Well, Mahavishnu breathes out and all the planets come out. Mahavishnu 
And when he breathes in, everything comes back in. So, Haranyakashipu is saying, what is the use? This Dhruvaloka planet is no use. Because he said at the end of the millennium, at the end of the life of Brahma, it's, he said it's vanquished, it disappears. And so Harani Kashipu says, I, I, I just want to stay in the position of Brahma. We, ex we told yesterday, Brahma is a position, it's not a person, but it's a, it's a position which people get. And Haranyakashipu wanted to get that position. And he thought if he got that position, he thought he wouldn't die. But Brahma said, no, I also die. So Haranyi Kashipu is trying to find ways to avoid death. And, and he thought he could avoid death just by his tapasya. So Prabhupada said, this is the, the demon, the determination of the demon. They are very determined. But their determination is not to help people, it's to do harm to people. So, uh, this kind of determination is the mode of passion and ignorance. And devotees are also determined. But devotees' determination is for the service of Krishna. And so it's a very different kind of determination from the determination of Haranyi Kashipu. So devotees want to, we want to make everybody happy. We are happy and we want to make everybody else happy also. But Haranyi Kashipu, he wants to make everybody unhappy. He will feel happy, he will feel happy when he sees everyone else suffer. Right. Some, pe some people are like that. They see, when they see other people suffer, they think, ha, 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 good. And when they see other people happy, they feel why they're happy. Just like when we go to chant Hare Krishna and we're having kirtan and dancing, we're happy, people think, why are they so happy? They don't like to see us happy. 
They want to see us suffer, they want to see us miserable. So this is a demon, this is the nature of the demon. There's only two natures. There is the demonic nature and the godly nature. Some people say, oh no, there must be more than this. There should be more than two natures. They'll say, I may not be devotee, but I'm not a demon. <laughs> but Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, no, if you're not devotee, then you're the demon. You may not be a big demon like Haranya Kashipu, but still you're a little demon. <laughs> and the little demons also get the same kind of destination as the big demons. They stay in the material world. Okay, any questions? <laughs> no, we should show them we're happy. But our happiness is different from what they think happiness is. Our happiness is within. Our happiness is spiritual. What they think is happiness, their happiness is not within, it's out, it's external. Their happiness is all the body, the senses. It's all what feels good to the, the tongue or what feels good to the skin, they're thinking that is happiness. But they don't know there's, there's a, a different happiness which is from the soul. So we, we want to try to give more people an opportunity to experience real happiness. When we experience real happiness, then we will never want this illusion, the happiness of the body. The happiness of the body is very temporary. 
People spend a lot of time and money to try to make the body happy. But very easily they can make the soul happy. It does not cost them anything, they don't have to spend all their money. They just have to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Take part in the kirtan. They can feel spiritual pleasure. So when when people are when we are happy, of course we're we're conscious. We we feel compassion for people who are suffering. One devotee told he was in Australia and he was he gone to the airport to pick up Prabhupada one morning. Prabhupada had come to their city and he was bringing Prabhupada from the airport in a big car. So he, he saw so many people he saw so many people, they were going to work. You know, people were on their motorbike or bicycle, they were going to work and go to work in the factory. So he said, he was, he was looking at them, he said, he said, I, he said, he was thinking, Wow, these fools, they're so stupid, they're going to work in the factory. You know, he was laughing at them. But Prabhupada, he was looking at them and he had tears in his eyes. And he was thinking, they're so unfortunate. So like that, we don't, we don't laugh at people, we have compassion, we care for them. We don't think we're better than other people. But we we think we are fortunate. Continue. Yeah, but we want to make the unfortunate people fortunate. Hare Krishna. Yes. Krishna, you much, you much. I have uh, two questions. Uh, first question is uh, you mentioned that Dhruva Loka is a spiritual planet, but it's a material world. So, uh, as far as well, what I have been told is that all the spiritual planets the Lord resides there in one of the skies. So Dhruvalaka, does Lord Vishnu reside there? Or is like Dhruva the person in charge over there? Dhruva Raj? Dhruva Raj? Yeah. Yeah, Lord resides there. Shirodaka Shai Vishnu resides there. Okay, my second question is, uh, in Dhruva Raj, 
uh, wants to progress in his uh, devotion, let's say maybe he wants to go to a different rasa, uh, can he leave Dua Loka and go to a higher planet, to a higher rasa? Well, yeah, it depends what his rest is meant to be. He can leave, but yeah, if, if it depends on what his, if he is satisfied there or not. If he is satisfied there, then he won't leave. But if he feels there's something not, still not perfect, he's not fully satisfied, then he can leave and go on to higher places. He can go on just like in just like Brihad Bhagavadam Rita Gopkumar went to Vaikuntha and then from Vaikuntha then he went to Goloka and then well, when he was in Vaikuntha he went to Mathura, he went to Ayodhya, then he went to Goloka. So yeah, there's progression, you can go on. Or well, Lord Vishnu is there. He's residing there. It's not like he's in charge of the whole planet. He's residing there. Okay. Yes. Well, we have the songs which we sing every day. Right? Guru Vastikam. No. Guru Vandana. Links, links to Shunga. And we sing also Gora Arti in the evening. Tosi Arti. We, we, we sing on Jai Radha Madhava before the class, usually. So, in Vrindavan, if you go to Vrindavan every morning, they will sing that song which I sang today, Vibhavari Shesha. Because in Vrindavan they go to Prabhupada Samadhi at 4.15 and there they sing the Guru Vastika. And so then at 4.30 we go into the temple, so we don't sing the Guru Vastika again, we just sang it. So we sing the Viva Varishesha. It's a morning song. Right? It's a, the song is saying, now the night is over, it's time to wake up and chant the holy name of the Lord. So like that, some songs we sing more, some songs we sing less. But so if it's in the Vaishnava song book, yeah, sometimes it's nice to be able to sing these songs. Uh, 
Srila Prabhupada said, when we sing the songs, we must know the meaning. He said, we should know the meaning, not just sing the song and what and we don't know. If, the, if we don't know the meaning, then you won't get any benefit. Okay. Hare Krishna. Okay, Niman, how you went, Hima? May I? Okay, Jintan Dalcha, Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Chai.